Good day, my dears. Welcome to my class on Your Menopause, Your Way. <laughs> I just love being your teacher. <laughs> and while I may not look like a typical teacher, <laughs> I assure you that I am well qualified to give you this education. I may be a bit goofy, but I am not dense. Dense, that pertains to our topic today. This is video number 376, the 21st video in the Breast Cancer Unit. And it's on dense breasts as a risk factor for breast cancer. I've been covering all the individual risk factors for breast cancer ever since video number 365. Before that, I taught you about normal breast anatomy and about benign breast diseases. And thus far, the risk factors I've discussed in detail include all the following. Genetic mutations for breast cancer, personal history of cancer, exposure to intense radiation as in radiation therapy, family history of breast cancer, increasing age, and reproductive risk factors that increase the number of menstrual cycles you've had in your lifetime. So today we're ready to talk about dense breasts. And for this video, you will need to, to draw on all that I've covered in previous videos in this breast cancer unit, which began with video number 356. I promise you, there is always a reason I present these videos in the order that I do. Nothing on this YouTube channel is random. I mean, heck, I barely even know the meaning of the word random. <laughs> All of chapter 30 in my book is on breast cancer, and it's a good idea to use it alongside these videos. Now, dense breasts have become a big deal lately. Women and their doctors say the words dense breasts a lot, but they don't usually explain what they think they mean, or they don't explain what they are, or how they impact your risk of breast cancer. So I'll cover all of this in detail today. And I'll be referring back on this particular video in future videos to take the concept even further later on. To start, let's go all the way back to the very first video in this breast cancer unit, video number 356. In that video, you learned that your breasts consist of three primary anatomical components. Remember this? It's a basic, basic breast anatomy model. The three components are the glands, which was represented here by the broccoli, the fibrous tissue, tissue which is represented here by the fibrous strands, supposedly bamboo shoots, <laughs> and the fat here. And this fibrous tissue is what makes your breasts dense. It's thick and firm, just like fiber is anywhere else. Then, in video number 357, you learn that the predominant component of these three things in your breast change as you go through the different hormonal phases of periods, pregnancy, breastfeeding, and postmenopause. And the fibrous tissue in your breast is most predominant between puberty and the time you become pregnant for the first time. It's the firm, supportive tissue in your breast that serves to make them perky and perfectly shaped. Dense breasts are breasts that consist of a high proportion of fibrous tissue in comparison with the quantities of glandular and fatty tissue. So it means that there's a whole lot of this here. Lots of the fiber. In video number 357 on the anatomical evolution of your breasts through the ages, you saw that pre-pregnancy dense breasts look like this. They have a lot of fiber. This is kind of hard to hold. <laughs> and then in video 359 on dense and fibrocystic breasts, 
you saw that really dense breasts look like this. Let's see if I can hold them both. Oh. Okay? And here, the grapes are only present if you have fibrocystic breasts in addition to dense breasts. But you see how there's a whole lot of fiber? More fiber than glandular tissue or fatty tissue. So dense breasts are a natural consequence of youth or of never having embarked on pregnancy or breastfeeding. And they also commonly occur in conjunction with fibrocystic breasts. But neither dense breasts nor fibrocystic breasts constitutes a disease. If you're furrowing your brow wondering how dense breasts can be normal and still be a risk factor for breast cancer, think about some of the other risk factors we've designated thus far. Getting older is a risk factor, but it's not a disease. Starting your periods at a young age is a risk factor, but it's not a disease. Having very few or no pregnancies is a risk factor, but it's not a disease. Having your first full-term or near-term pregnancy very late in your life is a risk factor, but it's not a disease. Little or no breastfeeding is a risk factor, but it's not a disease. And becoming postmenopausal late is a risk factor, but it's not a disease. So do not think of risk factors for a disease as an actual disease. 50% of women have dense breasts, so they are very common. Here's a photo depicting four levels or degrees of breast density. The first one is not dense at all. It's all fat, which is yellow. The second one has areas of dense tissue that are just scattered about. The pink parts represent the dense fibrous tissue. The third one is called heterogeneously dense, meaning that it's about half and half. Half fat and half dense fibrous tissue. And the fourth one is extremely dense, consisting almost entirely of the dense pink tissue. Well, here we are addressing dense breasts as a risk factor for breast cancer. And it turns out that the denser your breasts, the higher your risk of breast cancer. And lo and behold, dense breasts are one of the highest risks for breast cancer. In studies comparing women with completely fatty breasts to women with extremely dense breasts, the women with extremely dense breasts have a four to six fold increase in risk. In video number 366 on risk, I told you that to be significant, the increased risk has to be at least threefold. Well, dense breasts increase breast cancer risk by four to six fold. So this is significant. Threefold is required for significance and this is four to six fold. Compared to the average low breast cancer risk of 14%, dense breasts can increase your risk to between 57 and 85%. Now, why do you suppose that dense breasts are such a strong risk factor? I mean, how can a normal fibrous tissue in your breast present such a big risk? How can this perfectly normal stuff do such a thing? You know, I always find normal anatomy that causes problems a bigger quandary than things that are not part of your natural body. It's easy to understand why a chemical, a toxin, or an irritant might cause problems for your body, but it's more difficult to fathom your own body causing problems for itself. Well, if you reflect on what you learned in last week's video, one of the things that increases your risk of breast cancer is having a lot of menstrual cycles throughout your lifetime. And the more menstrual cycles you have, the higher your risk 
of breast cancer. And you learn how to calculate your menstrual life. And if the total is less than 350 cycles in your lifetime, you have a low risk of breast cancer. If it's between 350 and 450 cycles in your lifetime, you have a high risk of breast cancer. And if it's greater than 450 cycles in your lifetime, you have a very high risk of breast cancer. You also learned that the things that contribute to a high number of menstrual cycles and therefore a high menstrual life score are early age at menarche, late age at first full-term or near-term pregnancy, few or no pregnancies, few or no months of breastfeeding, and late age at postmenopause. But if you look closely at that list, you see that everything on it occurs in the context of dense breasts. Dense breasts are most common in women who have never been pregnant and never breastfed. That alone gives them a high menstrual life value. So what it really comes down to is that a high menstrual life value equals dense breasts. Dense breasts are not abnormal, but they are the result of having periods that are never interrupted by pregnancy and breastfeeding. And pregnancy and breastfeeding decrease your menstrual life value a lot. So it may not be dense breasts in and of themselves that increase your risk for breast cancer. Instead, it might be that dense breasts occur in the context of an array of other things that increase your risk for breast cancer. And altogether, the risk is significant. Now, does that mean that Women who have had pregnancies and breastfed cannot have dense breasts? No, of course not. Nor does it mean that all women who have not had pregnancies or breastfed have dense breasts. It just means that the women with the densest breasts are likely to be those with the most of these other risk factors in addition to their dense breasts. So let's add this to our chart of risk factors. In video 359, you learn that dense breasts are also called fibrocystic breasts. That's this, with a lot of fiber and a lot of cysts, which are the grapes. Fibrocystic breasts, while sometimes painful and heavy before your periods, are not diseased breasts. There is no such thing as fibrocystic disease. You know, we tend to label things we don't like as a disease, even when they're not diseases. Just because dense or fibrocystic breasts are associated with an increased risk of breast cancer does not mean they are diseases. Now, let's just stop a minute and reflect on the other units in which I've discussed this issue of density. It just keeps coming up over and over again. In the unit on heart attack, you learn that you have two different kinds of cholesterol-carrying lipids, high-density lipoproteins and low-density lipoproteins. The high-density lipoproteins decrease your risk of a heart attack, but the low-density lipoproteins increase your risk of a heart attack. So high density was good, and low density was bad. Then, in the unit on osteoporosis, you learn that osteoporosis is all about bone quantity, and bone quantity is all about bone density. The denser your bone, the lower your risk of osteoporosis and fracture. So dense bone is good, while non-dense bone is bad. After that, we had the Alzheimer's unit. And in the Alzheimer's unit, you learn that the denser your brain, the lower your risk of Alzheimer's. So high density was good, and low density was bad. And now, in this breast cancer unit, you see that dense breasts increase 
your risk of breast cancer. So for the first time, high density is not good. I just think contrasts like this are fascinating. And interestingly, in most cases, whether you're discussing your heart, bones, brain, or breasts, density decreases with age. The key is to know when that's a benefit versus when it's a risk for a disease. We'll be coming back to this issue of breast density in later videos and you will learn why there's much more to it than what I've told you here today. I guess the most important thing to realize is that it's not dense breasts per se that increase your risk for breast cancer. Instead, it's all the things that transpired to make them dense. And later, you'll see that all the difficulties of evaluating dense breasts increase your risk for breast cancer too. So if we were to create a dense breast equation, <laughs> it would look like this. Early menarche plus late first pregnancy plus few or no pregnancies plus little or no breastfeeding plus late postmenopause equals a high menstrual life score, which equals dense breasts, which equals an increased risk of breast cancer. A simplified version of this dense breast equation is this. High menstrual life score equals dense breasts. Or more accurately, dense breasts equal high menstrual life score. <laughs> Whenever analyzing a risk factor, I always put it in the context of normal or abnormal. Here we have an absolutely normal component of your breasts fibrous tissue, causing an increase in your risk of breast cancer. So how can a completely normal thing create a risk for a disease? Well, as you've seen today, maybe we're blaming the wrong thing. Maybe it's not dense breasts that are to blame for the increased risk of breast cancer. Maybe it's all the things that made them dense in the first place. And maybe the difficulties in evaluating them warrants a new way to evaluate them. So what you've learned today is that having dense breasts is a significant risk factor for breast cancer. But instead of dense breasts contributing in isolation to an increased risk of breast cancer, it is more likely that they occur in the context of a woman who has other reproductive risk factors, such as no pregnancies or breastfeeding. As usual, you can find our ever-expanding chart <laughs> via the link in the description box just below the screen, or you can go to menopausetaylor.me. And I think that's it for today. There will be a lot more detail on dense breasts when we get to the videos on screening for breast cancer. If you have dense breasts and you want to understand how they contribute to your particular situation, be sure to schedule a consultation with me at menopausetailor.me. Every woman's situation is unique, and I cannot tailor anything to you in a video or a comment box or any other place other than a consultation. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my bi-weekly newsletter. I give you all sorts of useful information in a fun way, and there are always promotions and discounts on educational products and services for menopause. And if you're a social media fan, You'll find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Stories, along with giveaways, current events, and all kinds of other things. <laughs> and I will see you in a week. <laughs> Bye!